tarov, bull. Today, tarov can be prefixed to an Irish word to indicate that the person or thing in question is strong, mighty, or powerful. The intensifying force of this word is of long standing. In the earlier language, tarov long was a mighty ship, tarov hu was a fierce hound, and tarov la was probably a tyrannical ruler. The first word in all of these compounds is tarov, which means bull. Arguably, the most interesting compound involving this word is tarvesh. This consists of tarov combined with the word fesh, which has a variety of meanings encompassing spending the night, but also entertainment for the night, including food and sex. In a number of medieval tales, this term is used to refer to a ceremony held to determine the rightful successor to kingship. Details are as hazy as they are intriguing. The fullest account is that provided in an old Irish tale called The Wasting Sickness of Cúchulín. According to this story, Tarvesh begins with a white bull being killed and the man eating the meat and drinking the broth produced after it is cooked. The man falls asleep then and the rightful king is revealed to him. When bulls are referred to in medieval Irish laws, the context often has to do with wealth and social hierarchy. An 8th century legal text tells us that the boide, a person of low but independent status, should have 20 cows and two bulls of his own, as well as other animals. The bulls would have been essential for breeding and sources suggest that these were loaned from one farmer to another, no doubt to prevent inbreeding. Interestingly, the work of bringing a bull to a cow was permissible on a Sunday, even though other activities such as sewing, shaving and baking were prohibited on that day. It was, of course, contention over bull which set in motion the events of the best-known early Irish tale, the Cattle Raid of Cooley. Realising that her husband possessed a bull named Finn Venoch, for which he had no equivalent, Queen Maeve organised an expedition to acquire the brown bull of Cooley. Maeve's reaction was not simply an act of pique. If the value of her property was not equal to that of her husband, this affected the nature of their marriage contract. A union which should have been one of equals, in which both parties brought to the relationship the same amount, became one in which the man had the upper hand. It was this situation that Maeve sought to redress in undertaking the cattle raid of Cooley. The futility of the exercise is set out dramatically at the end of the tale, as the brown bull wanders around Ireland, the wounded Finn Vanach on his horns, dropping bits of the latter's anatomy in various locations along the way and supposedly giving rise to place names such as All Loin, At Loin, which is interpreted as the ford of the loin, or the ford where the loin of the Finn Venoch fell from the brown bull's horns.